all of us have a craving for intimacy. Every one of us have a craving for, for meaning and all of us have a craving for destiny. And it, is it possible these longings, these desires, these cravings are actually our soul uh, searching for God? I mean, when I was uh, 12 years old, I, I was in a psychiatric chair and I uh, was in and out of a hospital because I was a pretty broken, damaged human being. And what I think is interesting about all of us is that we are so desperate for some things, we'll even damage ourselves to try to get them and love is one of them. You know, the thing with intimacy is we all long for intimacy, perhaps more than anything else, and yet we all fear intimacy probably more than anything else. And here we are, uh, we're relational beings. We, we want someone who knows us and we want someone who will not only love us, but we want someone who actually thinks that our love is worth having. And whether we, we're rejected, betrayed, whether we're forgotten, uh, whether we experience uh, the, the loss of love, the death of love, uh, we're still on this desperate search for love. And if we choose isolation and if we choose disconnection, uh, our souls begin really to dry inside, to die inside. Loneliness and isolation just are not good conditions for the soul. You can tell that we're designed for love because the more we begin to live in love, the healthier we become as people. And the more we feel as if we can't find love, the more disconnected and isolated we become. I had to change the posture. I said, look, I'm not gonna spend my life looking to be loved. I'm gonna spend my life looking for opportunities to love. And I began discovering that love was an unlimited commodity that I didn't have to be loved by another human being to actually be a, a source of love. And that was a wonderful thing in relationship to God, was that uh, God uh, became for me that, that place, that source uh, of unconditional, undeserved love. And, uh, and I gotta tell you, uh, 30 years later, it's, uh, it's not old. I just decided the best way for me to invest my life was in people who are maybe more damaged and more hurting and more broken than me. And you can develop an incredible sense of gratitude when you're working with people who um, are in a more desperate state than you. I remember as a kid, I had this intense burden uh, for humanity to end poverty, to end hunger, uh, to try to make a difference in the world. And, and you know, of course, the problem is that you begin realizing how can you save the world when you can't save yourself. And you know, someone wrote a piece and described me as a prophet of hope. And I thought, I love that metaphor. Because mm. uh, if there's anything I've discovered in my life is that there's, there's always one more solution than there is a problem. You know? And I'm an incredibly optimistic, hopeful person. And I do enjoy life. And I love watching films. I love playing basketball. I love seeing the world. I've maybe been to 50, 60 countries mm. around the world. And I, I love engaging new people in new places. And in some sense, I'm actually attracted to crisis because I'm so confident there's a solution. So many people are so negative on this emerging yeah. generation. Yeah. They say, well, you know, they're slackers yeah. and they're, you know, without intention and purpose, they're self-indulgent. I'm going, I don't know where they're finding theirs, but let me tell you that the, the thousands of people who come to Mosaic, uh, overwhelmingly, they're passionate, they're zealous, they're intense. Uh, they're, they're, they're sick and tired of things that are fake and superficial. They want an authentic faith or no faith at all. Right. And uh, they're willing to lay their lives down right. and risk everything. And I, I, I love this generation because they, they remind me what it looks like to be alive. Meaning is more than just some kind of um, dogma. It, it, meaning is more than an apologetic. Meaning is, is not simply a philosophical search. What we're all searching for is not simply truth. We're, we're asking, can anyone be trusted? And that's at the core of all this. And we're trying to live a meaningful life. And in that meaningfulness, we begin to, to have meaning.